In response to any criticism their team gets, whether it's haters on X, the mainstream, or in person, Celtic fans have made a habit of consistently responding with one phrase. No Larry? If your favorite team or player hasn't won a championship, Celtic fans don't want to hear your takes on why said team or player is better than theirs, and rightfully so to the utmost extent. Even when singer Dua Lipa refused to sign a photo of her in a Celtics jersey and instead crumpled the picture up, Celtic fans would respond in the exact same way. No Larry? Oh, um, I think you meant Leroy. A big piece to the Celtics winning the 2024 Larry O'Brien Trophy was Sam Hauser, who hasn't received enough respect throughout my channel Celtic series. Recently, Hauser was even called out by a rival player. Before Tatum and Brown were disrespected at the Olympics, something the team as a whole has been motivated by, they dominated Game 3 of the Finals in historic fashion, which will break down in the film room. That's coming up. We covered Tatum and Brown being heavily underappreciated by the Olympic team in this video right here, but via ESPN's Ramona Shelburne, Al Horford spoke on Tatum's sporadic playing time with USA Basketball and Brown's snub from the team, saying, quote, I personally was not happy about it. These guys, they're very special to me. And even though it was nothing against me, it motivated me and all of us for this season. I know that they handled it well. They're fine. But when you see those two guys, the amount of work that they've put in, the sacrifices they made to be on top of their games, and that happened to them, it was hard to watch the Olympics and not see them in the position that we would have hoped to see them in." End quote. The article from Ramona goes on to highlight Tatum's motivation for being underplayed by Steve Kerr at the Olympics, stating, But Tatum wasn't just there at 6 that first week. He had been doing two-a-days with his longtime skills coach Drew Hanlon and physical therapist Nick Sang to address a mechanical issue in his jumper that had come up early in the season and reared its head again during the playoffs and Olympics. Skills coach Hanlon told Shelburne regarding Tatum seeming extra motivated, quote, I think a lot of people are like, oh, he's out for revenge. I don't think Jason looks at it like that. He's like, compare my resume at 27 to Michael Jordan, who never won one at 27. Compare it to LeBron, who had won one. Compare it to Steph, who had won one, end quote. At Media Day, Tatum spoke on getting two DNPs at the Olympics, saying, quote, I talked to Joe a lot. Joe was probably the happiest person in the world, that I didn't win finals MVP, and that I didn't play in two of the games at the Olympics. That was odd, but if you know Joe, it makes sense, end quote. It's safe to say Tatum has a ton of extra motivation heading into 24-25. Meanwhile, reporters didn't waste any time with Jalen Brown. Not getting called on for the, uh, the Olympic roster there. How did that make you feel? And God are you damn, carrying any of those? number one. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Right off the bat. The, Not a the, lot of chances here. The warm-up a little? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> That's how the season's going to go, man. Evidently driven by his Olympic snub, Horford said about Brown via the Ramona Shelburne article, quote, I've been in the gym with Jalen the past few weeks. First of all, the dude looks like he's put on 10 more pounds of muscle. He looks great, just unreal. He's so hungry, so motivated, so driven, end quote. Brown said at Media Day, quote, I'm ready to go. I'm excited about being back. The past is the past, but I'm ready to get after it. Lead our guys. I'm extremely motivated for obvious reasons, end quote. Brown would have this to say about the man we're about to talk about next in Sam Hauser and the man we talked about last video in Peyton Pritchard. Finding different ways to lead also sometimes means that sacrifice where, you know, on a, a night we plan, don't mean to disrespect them, but the Detroit Pistons who have struggled over the last year or two, you know, we're going to play through Peyton, let him go for 30. We're gonna play through Sam, let him shoot 10 threes tonight. We're going to still win the game. You know, it don't have to be the normal way, but that gives those guys confidence. It gives those guys ability um, to, to run free, and we're going to need that down the line. Lakers guard Austin Reeves was asked a simple and direct question while golfing a few days ago on his vlog being which NBA player would he beat one-on-one -on -one with no questions asked. Reeves responded with quote-unquote, I'll play Sam Hauser. Reeves assumably said he could beat Sam because Hauser is not known for his ability to defend, but based off the tape of his defense during the 2024 playoffs and regular season, we can see Hauser has quick enough feet and persistent enough activity to be a solid on-ball defender. I get Reeves was picking who he thought to be a below average player as someone he could beat to seem humble, but Hauser is anything but a slouch. Offensively, Sam's about as lethal of a shooter as you'll find. 
Hauser finished 11th in three-point percentage during the 23-24 season, but among the top 11, he took the third most amount of three-point attempts per game at 5.9. In a late March outing against the Washington Wizards, Hauser was on pace to break Klay Thompson's single-game three-point record, as the man had 10 threes with eight minutes left in the third quarter. Unfortunately, after attempting another triple and missing, on his back pedal he suffered an ankle injury which kept him on the ground for several minutes, forced him to go to the locker room, and he'd never return. Thankfully, this injury only kept him out two games, and he would return against Detroit and begin to find his groove, as in April, he would average 13 points per game, his most in any month of the season. In the first and fourth rounds of the playoffs, Uncle Sam posted 8 plus points per game on stellar efficiency. Primarily in the finals, the fact that he shot his highest percentage of any round from both the field and three-point range while being the Celtics' sixth leading scorer goes to show that the product of Marquette and Virginia is a timely contributor, ready to step up in the biggest moments. This earned the most underrated player on the Celtics a four-year $45 million extension this offseason. The duo that's been labeled as one who doesn't have that dog in them, who aren't compatible, and who need to be split up by the mainstream, but who I've labeled and will continue to until further notice as the best duo in the association in Tatum and Brown, combining for 61 points, 14 rebounds, and 13 assists in Game 3 against Dallas last June, was one of the better dualistic performances in Finals history. It was the very best dualistic performance in Celtics history, which says a lot given the franchise leads all 30 teams with the most championships. The Jays manufactured practically every single point for the Celtics to give them a 3-0 series lead, given they scored 57% of the team's points and also had 13 dimes. With their beastly showings that carried Boston, Tatum and Brown became the first duo in Celtics history to score at least 30 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists in the same finals game. A game before winning the franchise's 18th chip, it was the 18th time Tatum and Brown scored at least 25 points in the same playoff game throughout their careers, passing Larry Bird and Kevin McHale for the most such games by a duo in franchise history. Showing versatility, Tatum's firstly the screen setter for Derek White, who he gets it from on the roll and Euro steps through Hardy and Doncic. Secondly, it's Tatum going from the pick and roller to the pick and roll ball handler by receiving a D-White screen and going with a tween cross, triple tween combo to create space for the pull-up. After a Tillman contest forces a miss around the cup, Jalen Brown attacks to his left on the fast break. Brown's jab and pump fake catches P.J. Washington in no man's land for whatever reason, opening up a dime to Tatum who drains the spot up. An insane D-White dime over all five Mavs spots Tatum right here, and Jason finishes by letting Exum fly by and two-handed jamming. With Washington opting to go under this white screen, Tatum shows you his range with a 28-footer. Jason's momentum cross on Tim Hardaway Jr. gets him the first step before a Euro steps through both he and Daniel Gafford to get to his left. Holiday and Tillman trapping garners the steal, and it's Brown underhanding to Tatum on the runout. Brown opts to ISO Washington by attacking to his left, up vacant at the foul line and rising up over the contest. With Kyrie fronting, it's Tatum reverse ceiling, Brown floating the entry, and Tatum finishing to complete a beautiful high-low connection. Brown takes on Kyrie in an isolation, stops on a dime in Tween's left, and fizzles through the lane where he finishes over the low-man help of Luka. Drew DHOing to Brown leads to another connection between the Jays, as Jalen draws the eyes of all five on the baseline before overhead kicking to Tatum, who says hand down, man down in the face of Washington. Out of the timeout directly after that, Tatum fakes a post-up entry from the three-point line before pivoting out of it into a drive entry, drawing the help of Lively, and opening up a pass to set up a Brown throwdown. Tatum operating from the post, sees him draw the eyes of five, kick it to White, who swings it to Tillman, who swings to Brown for the triple. After a block from White, Holiday finds Tatum streaking, who after throwing it down somehow fails to get the whistle. Semi-transition ISO from Brown sees him expose Maxi Kleba in space. Jalen faking attack right and instead getting a high ball screen to his left leads to him then momentum tweening into a forceful drive to his offhand where he gains momentum, goes back to his right, and takes off for one of the plays of the year. 
Tatum goes tween in and out dribble and momentum cross to get by Lively, then catches Kyrie completely out of position and finds Brown for the corner triple. Another high-low set sees this time Tatum set up Brown, who post-fades over Doncic. Tatum gets inside for the Euro step but comes up empty, only for Brown to clean up his scraps. Tatum's able to cut back door on Kyrie to receive the entry in traffic from White, and while collecting it, instinctively spins around green and posterizes Kyrie. After the Mavs cut it back to two, Brown comes up clutch by using the white screen to get switched on to Hardaway, who he hits with a quick tween left, slight drive entry, stop on a dime, pump fake, and rise up over the contest jumper, which he sinks. Every year since basketball is a team sport that's superstar driven, we feel the need to crown one player as the best in the game, the best on his team, and or the one who carried his troops with a once in a lifetime performance. In 2024, it was a little different. Jalen Brown deserves his flowers for winning both Eastern Conference Finals MVP and NBA Finals MVP. Jason Tatum deserves his flowers for becoming only the fifth player in NBA history to lead a team in playoff points, rebounds, and assists during a championship run. There isn't one player we can look to and say, that was the man who strapped a team on his back and carried them. Brown shot six percentage points higher from the field than Tatum in the finals and averaged less than two points per game than him in them. Don't forget about Drew Holiday. Among the top five Celtic scorers in the finals, Holiday was the leader in both three-point field goal percentage and overall efficiency by a mile. Seven Celtics averaged at least seven points per game in the finals. Five averaged at least 12 per game. In this year's case, there's no need to give an overwhelming amount of credit to one individual. Regardless of the narratives, Celtic fans will have the same response to every one, though. No Larry? This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.